This is the Teaching Bites podcast, episode number 14. Welcome to the Teaching Bites podcast, our unprofessional development resource to take your teaching to the next level. Here are your hosts, Fred and Sharon Jaravada. Welcome to our show where we share bite-sized tips, ideas, and tricks so you can make them your own. Whether you're a brand new teacher or a veteran teacher, we're here to help you take your teaching to the next level. We're your host, she's Sharon. He's Fred. Welcome back, everyone. This is this 14th episode, and we know we're a couple days late on this, but you know, life uh, life happens, uh, but we do recognize that we need to step it up and make sure we have episodes for you because we really appreciate you and we do want to share our best tips with you right? yeah and, and one reason why we've uh, lagged a little bit is because we're working on something exciting we're making guides for chromebooks and ipads mm-hmm. for you guys so just uh keep an eye out right for that pretty cool all right so before we start i'm going to give um give the uh, some fun facts about the number 14 did you know that on so on a lot of buildings actually that they don't have 13 floor well they don't have the 13th floor marked on the <coughs> elevator mm-hmm. usually it's just 10 11 12 14 so you'll see a lot of um buildings that don't have 13 but they go straight to number four Right. Pretty interesting. Huh. What and, else? Uh, did you find anything I else? I found something else because I used to play piano and I used to play a flute and, you know, you start with classical music. And so um, everyone knows Be- Beethoven. He had Moonlight Sonata and actually it's technically called the Piano Sonata Number 14. And I don't think I remember that. So. <laughs> Pretty interesting. Okay. I think it's a slow um, tempo of a song. I don't remember it, but okay. everyone knows that song. Mm-hmm. But something else you didn't know about 14. A fortnight? Have you heard of that? Yeah, that equals... 14 two, days. Two weeks. Yeah, about two weeks, yes, 14 days. And is so. that used back in the revolutionary days? Or I don't even know <laughs> when. <laughs> revolutionary days. I don't, it sounds like it's so old school, like using not... not, not um, like like, different like, units like of four scores and seven yeah, like years ago. we don't use it now. No, we don't really use it much, but yeah, a couple of weeks, mm-hmm. fourteen days. I mean, I read it many times. Yeah, you're right. I, I in those old documents they say about fortnight. Mm-hmm. Probably goes back even farther than that. Probably so. Right. Yeah, but uh, okay. welcome to episode fourteen. So, what are we talking about, Sharon? Right. So, um, you know, we're thinking about oh, what should we talk about this week? And then I was telling you about my story about teaching in the moment and then we're like oh why don't we talk about teaching on the fly you mean go on a fly like a far uh, house fly yeah you you, you, you dev- literally sit on a fly Te- and, and then you teach, teach on it Very uh-huh haven't you done that before all the time so anyway you guys know what we mean teaching in the, in the moment teaching on the fly right? right so what does that mean right so what, what are we in, what before we do that let's talk about what this okay. is about so we're going to talk about what it is and what it isn't and if you're a new teacher this is something good for you to recognize um give you some tools so that you can teach on the fly and this is a, i think you know. a very important skill that they don't teach you in credential school at no. all i've never heard of that um on job descriptions i don't think they say are you able to teach on the fly they probably hide it behind the words of being flexible or being adaptable right and you know um we get all this curriculum teacher guides and it has like a script you should say this you should say this you know Mm -hmm. but the true art of teaching is being able to be flexible like you said in a reasonable way and we'll talk about that but if this is if you're not a new teacher this is good for seasoned teachers because um it can be an affirming episode um that recognizes the good work you do or it could be give you some little some new ideas for moving teaching um sorry keeping your teaching moving forward okay so that's what today's about 
So um, why do people teach on the fly? One reason is because, oh, we have five minutes. What are we going to do with it? You know, we don't five like to waste left, right. time. Mm -hmm. For me, I feel like every minute is super important. I don't want to just use it in um, a dry way. I want to have something related. People, sometimes you notice your, le your lessons aren't going very well. You got to figure out something else. Or students have voiced some choices and you kind of just go with the flow in that sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then what are the tools? Right? Yeah. And I, I mentioned them mm -hmm. earlier of being flexible, right? And being adaptable. Um, that comes with, what comes with experience, right? Yes. Um, being mm -hmm. reflective. Um, you wrote that down. Can you talk about that real quick about being reflective? Well, you, I mean, we all reflect, right? So during the teaching moment or the lesson, you're constantly thinking in your head, is this working or not? Are the kids getting it? You know, and so you're, at the moment, you might think they're not getting it. I got to do something else. Or at the end of the day, when you have a take a step back from what went on that day, you, you have to adjust to tomorrow. Right, yeah. tomorrow, or even I've, I've done that also, maybe at the end of the day, I will realize I missed something or I, 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 I said something wrong and then I would mm -hmm. like, like have a couple of minutes left in class and I go back and clarify it, right? Um, also, being adding to the being adaptable and being flexible and being reflective, it's also being um, using empathy of really identifying your students of how... How the less as you as you're giving the lesson, you have to really be in tune of how they're receiving what you're delivering, what you're what you're teaching about, right? Mm -hmm. How are they glazing over? Are they not listening? Are they um, being very passive? They're not not raising their hand at all, right? Or that puzzled look on their face, and you know they're like a uh, so or a they keep asking questions, like the body language. Right. right. Body language, you have to recognize the body language and recognize even the verbal cues. Right? And you can't ignore those things. Like that's a definitely a temperature gauge. And I know we all know we have to get these standards done. We got to get these lessons done. But it's really important to take those moments to stop, you know. Yeah, and you, have, you to might stop. have to redirect it. Get up, do something else. You know, and, and do it elegantly and appropriately. What I mean by elegantly um, you may have to weave uh, the. Uh, you may have to stop the lesson, or and then go on a tangent, right? Or the students may go off on a tangent. And as a teacher, it's a good skill how to you. Okay, let's go to this tangent. You know, let's go there, but weave it back into the learning goal. Right, and also we you can't do this all the time. You know, and no, you can't do this all the time. And you have to <laughs> not every moment. No, you, you, you have to be very impossible. selective in what's important. What's important? Otherwise, you're, you're right. not going to get to everything you're supposed you're supposed to teach. Then the kids will always interrupt you. They're always right. try, they're try they're, they're going to start manipulating you, right? In your in your teaching, right. so you got to you got to pick and choose what's the most appropriate time, right? Um, yeah. Any examples have you experienced with this? About um, teaching on the fly. I mean, we always do. I do, but I actually want to go back and talk about what it is not. Oh, okay. Just so, okay. and we had this talk before. So, what we started is this. what is what is um, teaching? What is not teaching on the fly? So, we we mentioned being reflective, and then you know, in the moment, you're thinking about okay, this is not working, or the kids need a different direction. Then you, at the moment, you change it up in some way. We'll talk about examples in a second. At the same time. When you're reflecting at the end of the day and figuring out what am I going to do tomorrow and you're planning, okay, now I'm going to change it this way. When you we deliberately plan it like that, that's not being on the fly because you're, you're, um, how do you say that? You're just, you're making it clear in your head that you're going to do this. On the fly is more like improvisation. Mm -hmm. It's in the moment. It's in the moment. The, right. teach, the teachable moment. Right. Right. And to be able to think of it quickly and make it you know seamless in a way to adapt elegantly to, that's the yeah, part that's elegant to what you're doing lead. so some examples all right um i had five minutes to yesterday after music class and i said what am i going to do oh okay let's do something fun with math because math is coming up 
So I looked for my book. I have a cool book. I couldn't find the book. I said, okay, I'm still going to do, I'm going to do riddles. Okay. So I just thought of um, having them do deduction questions and trying to, f- f- you know, guess a number. And it was so much fun because my kids started, wanted to do their own. And um, so it was definitely worthwhile because I like the collaboration. We like the the reasoning with that. Mm-hmm. So I did that. Um, also, last two weeks ago, no, March 2nd was Dr. Seuss's birthday, right? So mm. I had a Dr. Yeah. Seuss week and I had a parent read the book, I, If I Ran the Zoo. If you don't know that book... It's about this guy that wants to figure out what they, if they could run the zoo, what would they do? So there's all these crazy, you know, mm-hmm. ideas. And then at the end, I'm like, would you like to guys, would you like to write your own book about that? And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that moment, I said, okay, why don't you brainstorm what you would do, what mm-hmm. if you could run something. And we did that for a writing prompt. And I saw that they were so engaged, like they really want to share. I said, you know what, I'm taking that and let's do a project with it. Nice. So it's kind of like in the background. Right. It's not something I'm just, hey, let's just do the book now. Right. But you that's know? cool. They, so. they actually got really engaged with it and they wanted to go more and they could do more. Yeah. And I had to take that and run with it because I, I felt like it was not It was a moment where they had to extend that and they really wanted to share more, you know. Right. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. Mm-hmm. And uh, one more okay. example we're watching this space comprehension video for our our language arts curriculum. And, you know, we've been studying space anyway, so it's kind of um, supported that. And then I said, oh, at that time there was that um, probe that was trying to land on a comet. Remember that? And yeah. And it took like seven years last to... Last year or, yeah, like December last year. A couple year, months ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it took seven months for it to actually reach that location. Mm-hmm. So we're like, oh, I was like, I got to bring it back to the news of what's current events because I love that. Then we started, oh, and then I remember you showed our kids the video of the astronaut mm-hmm. and how they live in space. And then we started watching that. And then I'm like, oh, you guys, don't you want to know how the spaceship, the space shuttle lands? And we just, it just kept going. It kept going. So the but, tangent became, it kept going, but. Right. And. Yeah, and then it was still I had learning. To, yeah, and I had to scratch what I was doing. I'm like, you know what? This is such a great opportunity. Right. We're gonna scratch this. It's okay. And it was just time. Next, you know, it's time for lunch. Like, no, my gosh. <laughs> right. So that was really fun, and that wasn't planned. It wasn't planned. You know, right. on the fly. That wasn't so. the learn. That wasn't the original um, standard you were trying to reach. No. Right. No. But it was a worthwhile. But it felt so. Very, it felt so fulfilling. Yeah. A very genuine, you know, worthwhile yeah. lesson. Right? Mm-hmm. Those are the uh, the uh, um, the priceless teachable moments. Teachable right? moments, right? Right. So, well, how about you? You have okay. So there, there are many, there are many um, examples, but one in particular that stood out the past couple months is when um, I taught my digital citizenship class with my sixth grade boys this time, and I had. Two, I have two classes of uh, two sections to teach that. And one section they liked uh, vocabulary. If you don't know what fo- vocabulary is, it's a um, digital um, citizenship uh, site, but it uses hip hop for um, the way to deliver um, some great information, great um, concepts, and like oversharing. One great video that they work with Common Sense Media. And one section of the uh, sixth grade boys loved it. And last year, I taught it to my fifth grade boys last semester, and they loved it. They loved the rap. They loved the beat. They loved the uh, the way it's presented in the um, animation. Mm-hmm. But one section, they kind of didn't like it. And it became a moment where, well, how come you guys don't like it, right? Yeah. And the discussion went off on about... Well, these guys, these guys in vocabulary were just trying to use rap because we like rap. It wasn't even about the oversharing part, at least in the first few minutes. And so I ran with that. I, I kept going discussing that. I, I've i um, put off the oversharing topic that was yeah. we were talking about. Mm-hmm. But they wanted to talk about, they were really engaged in talking about why they shouldn't be exposed to this 
so-called rap in education type of thing. So it's more like delivery method than the, the delivery method, right? Teaching. And and they're very Objective. and they're like, yeah, they're just using rap because we like rap. I like, well, well, what's wrong with that? So we discussed it, and we went on a tangent about hip hop a little bit, and how. how and luckily, I I I, I do know um, like some of the history of hip hop and. They're talking about how it's East Coast type of beats and <laughs> East Coast type of uh, lyricism. Well, mm. is that the right word? Mm -hmm. Lyrics. Uh, Lyrics. Um, it's it's more dense. So um, East Coast and West Coast. For those who don't know, East Coast is usually more dense in lyrics, um, more sophisticated. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, the West Coast is a little more uh, rudimentary and uh, more um, it's simpler, right? Um, East Coast in this vocabulary in rap in this video over a sharing, it was dense, but the that section of boys thought it was just very like okay they're just they're just catering to me or pandering to me type of mm. thing. So we talked about that how why it's important why did they choose this way to deliver sh over sharing on the internet? Why did they choose this way to do it? And and it was a good discussion, and you know we went on tangents we went on uh, we went on the I taught on the fly. We all learn on the fly. Yeah. It's not teaching on the fly, but we learn on the fly why they chose this method and st instead of doing a workbook. So, right? so did the kids maybe suggest a different method, or did they maybe think about like asking the vocabulary folks about why they decided to use rap, or did it go further? So, so mm -hmm. we we uh, I took it back. I elegantly mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> took it back mm -hmm. to the oversharing part. And how, uh, you know, I talked about how it's just one way, like you said, one way to deliver it, how to catch your attention. And I've, after that, so we continue with the lesson, the official lesson. lesson. And as the weeks went by, I noticed I, for that section, I kind of used less of mm. that full of okay. vocabulary um, uh, lesson, uh, their videos. But for the others, they liked it, so I kept using, you know, mm -hmm. their lessons of vocabulary. And um, but with that section, I decided to pull back a little bit on there and do a little more the traditional way. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It's the same grade, but that no, section of the se yeah. that section of boys just the dynamics. So I had to be more in tune with what they liked and what they didn't like. So and then you know we have a, f a couple months left of school and I'm gonna go back and introduce that again mm -hmm. and, and we'll see how it goes if they like it or not and and again I'm not I'm not we're not stuck using vocabulary and how do you spell it it's F L O C A B U L L A R Y A R Y yeah we we'll put so, that in the show notes yeah yeah so mm -hmm. that's just one example of what I did um, a lot of things you know. Uh, like scratch was down today. Scratch, MIT scratch was down today, and we decided to do something else um, that's related to their project. And their project is about making a um, uh, like Jamestown, uh -huh. Jamestown project for the fifth grade boys. Fifth grade, yeah, U.S. And, history, yeah, U.S. history, and they were supposed to use scratch, look like uh, make like a little tour, like a Google Maps type of thing. Oh, okay. Um, but scratch was down today, so we decided. You know what? Let's. It's okay. Let's go and go dive different way into looking for more about information about um, about about Jamestown. So we found more like uh, uh, maps or drawings okay. of Jamestown. So I took it the other way, using the primary, l looking for primary sources. But it's still definitely related. I mean. Right. And then I also I also pulled in a little uh, some of the uh, how to make map or map making. So I pulled in a little about that, like oh, how to good. make a legend type of thing. That was very quick though. I just showed them really Was quick. that in the plans later on? That was in the plans, like my lesson plan. Uh, no, was it going to come up later on? Um, um, not really. It wasn't. Oh, so it, then it, that's was, good it, was, it was more of a, on the fly type of thing. <laughs> like on the fly, right? I was mm -hmm. improvising. Um, it just came out of my head. Maybe I, I just, re I don't know what I, I probably did think, okay, what do these guys need? Because I know they need to code this real quick, but how to make their maps a little more accurate, you know? Yeah. That's not really perfect, but at least they know where, you know, this is how Jamestown Fort was. It's more of a triangle-ish shape or, you know, is it by the water, by the bay mm -hmm. and so on. So we get, you know, refer to that. 
and um, you know the color schemes and you know, you know yeah, a lot so, of detail. So I put in the maps, you know. So that was just more of a on the fly type yeah, of thing. Yeah, actually, speaking of that, I have one more um, reason why we teach on the fly is we know sometimes we're not ready <laughs> to teach that lesson. True. Uh, yeah. So sometimes you have to just bring up something. And I've done it before many times. And it, one of the, the teachers in my school watched me. And she's like, I told her, oh, my gosh, I wasn't ready for that lesson. She goes, really? That's on the fly? I'm like, yeah. Because you know after a while which what you can do. And you know your kids so well. Yeah, I mean, you know? that's probably not in the beginning of the school year. That was No, more, that was like two weeks ago. It was like two weeks ago, right? That yeah, was, so you waiting with the kids and what they needed to know and how they're feeling, right? Right, right. So... That I mean, saves it me. It right. saves me a lot. <laughs> right. And, you know, and yeah, those skills just come mm-hmm. as you get, you know, get more experience. But right? definitely if you're a new teacher um, and you're observing master teachers, you know, or observing other teachers, talk to them about what they do or those look for these. moments, right? Those unscheduled yeah. things that happen. Or look for these and see to get ideas too. And if you have ideas, let us know. Right. So yeah, this is where teaching it's, is definitely an art. Yes. Right, it's an art. You just kind of react to things that happen. So right. you could lay out an outline, mm-hmm. but you have to be able to just, you know, go this way, go that way, you know, be able to mm-hmm. be flexible. Right. Okay. Okay. So. So, um, so before we uh, before we sign out, we need to tell um, our listeners what we're going to be doing because we have a spring break coming up. I know a lot of you guys are having spring break right now, um, but we're having spring break. Luckily, at my school and Sharon's school, we work different schools, and it's happening together. This is like the first, well, probably the second time in yeah, years. Yeah, it's been a long time since we have the same, the same spring time. break. Right. So what are we doing for spring break? We are going to Oahu. Hawaii. So excited. We have never gone on a plane with the kids. <laughs> this is actually my first time to go to Hawaii. I've been there on by lay, uh, layovers, but this will be interesting taking two young boys, a four year old, two two year old, and um, as a family and car seats. We got to learn all about all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, car and, seats. Uh, seats on um, an airplane. Interesting. All so. the logistics of security. Like we have a lot of friends that have kids, but it's exciting for them. It is very exciting. You know? Yeah. For them, well, for us, it's exciting. And them too. And I went when I was in high school. So that's a different experience with my family, you know. But now it's our family. Yeah. So yeah. it's going to be nice to just relax. You know, we haven't gone on vacation in a long this time. Is, yeah. We need it. Yeah, we need it. I hope you guys are enjoying your vacation or will be enjoying your spring break coming up. Right. And Rest when well. we come back, it's going to mm-hmm. be it's going to be the mad rush the next to month the end of the year. Months, right. The mad rush is coming up. Yeah, testing's coming for you public school teachers, you know. Um, in the U.S., it's the S back. Well, that's coming up. I know a lot of people are winding down, ramping up too. But projects, um, trying to cram all that curriculum it's in. It's ramping up. Right. It's so, a finish, finish line. Right. So enjoy. We'll see you guys soon. Okay? Yeah. So, yes. So, yeah. What, quick takeaways real quick. Um, yeah, so just recognize what is teaching on the fly and what is not. Um, and let's please join us. Thank you. Subscribe to our show. Leave an honest rating. Help make a show better. And please um, review us on iTunes. Thank you. Peace. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Teaching Bites podcast at www.teachingbites.com.